Welcome back to another segment, y'all, here on GEMS Podcast. For those of you that are new to the community, I am Miss Genesis Amaris Kemp. For those seasoned listeners, thank you so much for listening to another segment. With me today is a very special guest by the name of Janae Jasmine Lincolns, but we'll just call her Janae for now. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about who she is, and then we're going to dive into today's segment. So Janae is a lifetime resident of Indiana Head, Maryland. She is a graduate of the first historically Black college university, HBCU, the Lincoln University, with a Bachelor of Science degree in physics. She is currently pursuing her PhD in mechanical engineering from the University of Maryland at College Park, an active volunteer in her school and community for many years. Her passion for education has parlayed her into volunteering for many educational focused programs that serve to empower young women in pursuing their educational endeavors. Janae organized the first organ tissue donor drive at the Lincoln University through Be The Match Bone Marrow Donation Program. I'm not going to get tripped up y'all on that. She currently serves as the co-advisor for the College of Southern Maryland Engineering Club and National Society of Black Engineers Junior Chapter. In addition, she instructs the Engineer Like a Girl program. Janae volunteers with local Girl Scout troops for girls to obtain their STEM badges. Serves as president of the University of Maryland Black Graduate Student Union that focuses on growth, development, and advocating for educational success for minority students. She is an active member of the Southern Maryland Chain Chapter, the Lynx Incorporated. And without further ado, let's welcome the woman behind it all, and you'll see the sash she's wearing. <laughs> welcome, Janae. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And thank you for all of the work that you're doing within the STEM field and outside of the things that were not mentioned in your bio, because audience, let's be real. A bio is just a bio. Let's get to meet the person behind the bio. <laughs> so we're going to do that in the connection segment today. So are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. There are two options you can choose from. We can do either a rapid fire 10 question game emphasis on rapid or an icebreaker what are you in the mood for um I need to practice my interviewing skills for the pageant anyway so I'm going to do the rapid fire <laughs> Woo here we go we're playing rapid with fire with Janice oh I see y'all I'm in mama mode we're playing rapid fire with Janice <laughs> make like a little like theme song like a little jingle or something yes and I love having fun here, so nothing is edited. So question number one, what is one thing you're looking forward to about the pageant? Meeting everyone during the week um, is more than just like a pageant for me. It's like, you know, lifelong friends. Uh, my first pageant, I was able um, to make some friends and we're still friends to this day. And it's been like six years now. So um, just meeting all the women and, you know, just seeing all the different shapes, sizes, colors, um and just really yeah that's it I don't know I don't, is there like a 30 second limit like what is the I need I need, I need directions <laughs> I'll give I'll just let you know rabbit okay whenever you're going along I was like it's rabbit fine I'll okay. do that okay question number two what's one word to describe you multi-dimensional question number three what is one thing that builds your character loyalty question four if you had the opportunity to have a lunch or dinner with any person, past or present, who would it be? Mm, uh, probably George Washington Carver. Okay. Question five. If you could do three random acts of kindness per day, what are your three for today? Uh, three for today. Um, I love feeding kids. So like just feeding ch children. Um, what else? What else would I do? um visiting uh like the retirement homes um and probably just like telling someone like they look beautiful because you know somebody could be having like a trash day and then like one little compliment could help them so love that question six what attracted you to a hbcu Ooh, um so i went to predominantly white schools my entire life and so i really wanted to get submersed and understand the culture so <laughs> 
don't touch me. Um, but yeah, so I went to Catholic white, you know, predominantly white school. So yeah, I just that and you know, scholarship money. So I love that. So I'll do this question seven. So I also went to PWCs. Um, growing up, I grew up in an area where there was not a lot of people that looked like me. Another complexity to me is I'm first generation American, so Caribbean and South American descent. So whenever people hear you talk a certain way, do you feel like sometimes you have to code switch to fit in? Or are you fine with just being Janae, Jasmine, Lincoln's all the way? No cut. <laughs> okay, so this is something I've been like low key struggling with because um my first patch is someone told me that I was too real and like it was like I need to like you know bring it down a little bit yeah so like I'm trying to like learn like the balance but anyone who knows me like I will I have no cut calls I will say whatever um is on my mind if I don't like it you'll know I don't like it um because I'm very passionate I you know I know a lot of things and I'm very smart so I want to make sure that you know this this little pretty face in the, the no this is what it's up here. Oh yeah. So I just want to, so yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I think sometimes I, I don't, I don't know. I used to, but not as much now as I'm getting older. Okay. Question eight. So I, it seems like you stayed in Maryland a lot. What made you stay in Maryland versus transitioning out to somewhere else? Um, I mean, well, when I was in college, I went to, it was in Pennsylvania. And then my first grad, uh, master's program, I was in Delaware. Um, I don't know the DMV area is just so it's just so DMV like DC <laughs> like DC is like the pinnacle so I know and it's so many um, you know uh, different types of like you know black people like there's tech people there's real there's so many like different diverse groups of people and just being in this space is you know fulfilling and plus I'm from here and so I get to visit my parents and harass them so I like that. So the heartstring is the DMV area. So that's what keeps you coming back. Yeah, pretty much. Question nine, what led you to pursue your PhD and why mechanical engineering? Um, okay, so uh, you don't see a lot of black women in engineering. Um, and I always, I'm very solution oriented. I like to build stuff. Um, my great uncle, he had me, you know, at the sawmill, I was building all types of things. And so I loved doing stuff with my hands. Um, and so I know mechanical engineering just encompasses like a lot of, you know, different things. So I currently work on human, uh, center design, human systems. Um, I made prosthetic devices. I've done like a whole lot of it. And so, um, really my first, uh, black science teacher was in college and she was an engineer she was a physicist and it was been my inspiration I guess ever since shout out to Dr. Major um so uh yeah so I guess that's really been my inspiration um and then what keeps me going I think is that um, I used to teach high school and I have some students that I still connect with and actually one of my students is a third year in mechanical engineering at College Park so I get to see her a lot and so she was like the only reason well not the only reason but she was like yeah like you inspired me like I wanted to do it too and I was just like like if I can inspire at least one person like that, I just feel like that's fulfilling to me. That is awesome. And question 10, it is our pass or play question. And here are the rules. If you pass, our roles are reversed and you could ask me a question. If you choose to play, I ask one last question to wrap up rapid fire. So are we passing or playing? Playing. Okay. Last question here. What is one piece of advice you would give to your younger self if you could go back into time? Oh, man, if I could go back into time, um, well, I guess I would tell myself my platform, don't adjust your crown, because I felt like, you know, when I was younger, I would, you know, try to fit in and, you know, change myself to really fit the mold. And now as I'm older, like, no one can beat me. I'm the best Janae Jasmine Lincoln there is. And so, um, yeah, don't adjust your crown. That's what I would tell myself. And that's also my platform. So. Yeah. I love it. And thank you so much, Janae, for playing rapid fire. Audience, I hope you learned a little bit more about who Janae is personally and professionally as we get ready to dive into the segment, which I like to say the meat and potatoes because I'm down south. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> so you have this mantra for your 2023 national pageant. It says, I am a mechanical engineer. I am black. I am a woman. I am worthy my platform, Don't Adjust My Crown, encourages others to understand and appreciate their worth by cultivating respect in one's work. So the question that I'm going to lead in with this one is, 
how can you show somebody to take ownership of their worth, know who they are, why they're here and why they matter? Um, I mean, so it's really hard like to like physically or like tangibly show someone like this is what you're supposed to do. And so what I do in my workshops is, you know, um, they send, you know, some stuff prior, some background and stuff. So um, it's tailored to each person in a way. Um, so I try to do things that are, you know, for the general audience. Um, but essentially like, you know, I'm like, oh, so what are you passionate about? Like, what do you love? Like, you know, just trying to bring out that voice. Uh, because I think a lot of people, especially like younger children that I work with teenagers, like they don't really know what that voice is. It's just like, you know, all this like social media and all like everything. Right. And so like they just see what they, you know, see on TV or Instagram or whatever. And they take that and they say, you know, that's their thing. Right. And so then like when we really get into the workshop, like we break it down, like, what well, do you really believe in this? Like, you know, Tommy, like, I'm a researcher, like, tell me, like, give me some evidence. I need all of that, you know, citations. Um, and then we, when we get to that part, they're like, okay, well, maybe not. I'm like, okay, well then let's see, let's, let's dive a little bit more. So that's usually how um, it comes about. And like, at the end, like the students are like super excited and they're like, oh, like, you know, I like, I don't know, one of the girls, she didn't even realize that she, um, she thought that she wasn't like uh, the best speaker. And so, but she loves to talk. And she talked a lot. And so, <laughs> so we had like a 30 second like elevator pitch and um, she actually won, even though she claimed that she, you know, this is her first time, but yeah. So just bringing out what people, they have it inside. They just need to bring it out. I love that. So you really get to have these real, honest, raw, truth filling conversations with these individuals who may not necessarily know who they are whenever they're walking in, but by going through this discovery exercise and getting, you know, them to open up, be vulnerable, be transparent, then you help them piece together who mm -hmm. it is that they are and not what society has projected them to want to be. And I feel like in today's society, like we you were talking, there's a lot of things from societal pressures and norms like social media, family members, friends, peer mm -hmm. groups, all of these things that's constantly vying for our attention. And it's making individuals tap into IS, imposter syndrome, where they feel as if they're invalid when in actuality, they truly are valid. It's just you have to take time to go internally in order for you to manifest externally how you want the world to see you and mm -hmm. not the other way around. So when you think about adjusting your crown and not really fixing your crown to suit or follow suit with the atmosphere or the audience around you, how important is it to take ownership of your hair? Because your hair is your crown too. And I feel like we both are African-American women, part of the black and brown community. And sometimes we can be conditioned to wear our hair a certain way based on the work environment that we go into. And I'm going to say it. For me, I worked in STEM, so my degree is supply chain and logistics, and I worked in oil and gas for 12 years and seven and a half or a Fortune 500, and I was so conditioned to wear my hair straight all the time, do Dominican blowouts and et cetera, and it wasn't until I got laid off in the pandemic that I really started rocking my natural curls and stuff, and I'm like, my hair is beautiful, it's bold, and one thing that really jumped out at me was whenever I had my baby shower and an old um, representative from this company I worked with, she was in HR and she got my daughter these books that say, I love my skin, I love my hair and all of these things that look like her, even though my daughter's skin complexion is not like mine and her hair texture is not like mine, but just that there's books out there to empower right. things. So, and I say all of this because I wanted to put some context with the question audience. So don't think I'm going down the rabbit hole here. <laughs> so <laughs> from your voice, Janae, can you resonate with any of that? Oh, yeah, definitely. So that's actually where my platform inspiration came from was the Crown Act that was passed in 2019. So, right, exactly. Um, and so same same type of thing. Um, so I work uh, for the DOD, um, so down at a naval base. And so um, my first year, you know, was during the pandemic. And then my second year, third year, I was starting to go into the office. And then I was like, oh, like, I need to like look and dress the part. And, but it just got old really quick. And I was like, I'm not doing this. So I went back to my, my braids, my, um, you know, the 
faux locks, all of that stuff. And even like with my outfits, like anyone who knows me, I have thousands of pairs of platform shoes. Um, I feel like the air is different. I'm, like I feel like I'm supposed to be born taller, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> so even with like my outfit choices, like I am me, but like still in like a work, you know, professional way, but like I'll wear my platforms, like the work appropriate ones. Um, and so I just like, just being me. Cause like, I don't, I hate that I felt like I had to change myself to fit, you know, this image. And that even goes for the pageant world too. Um, you know, you see um, straight hair and, you know, tall, skinny, like all of that. And it's like, if you, if you say like, we're writing all this stuff down in our applications for this is the stuff that you're looking for, then why does all of that matter? You know? So that's another thing like I'm like battling with. And even like right now, so I'm trying to decide how I want to wear my hair. And so my first thought was like, okay, I'm going to get like a sew in a wig, whatever. And then I was just like, well, that's kind of contradictory to my platform because that's not my, that's not my crown. I mean, you know, we can do that, but that I just wanted to be me. So I'm thinking about wearing my natural hair. So I've been practicing with some styles. Um, I'll probably get some little extensions and make it a little longer, but it's still going to be me, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it's, 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 it's progress. It's a, it's for me, it's really like, that growth, like I'm growing into who I'm supposed to be and who I am aspiring to be. And I love that. And I want to empower women as a whole. Like you see other women with certain hair types and textures, but you don't really know the story behind the styles that they wear. So if you ask those women versus trying to copycat those women or et cetera, then I think there would be more power in understanding the story behind certain hairstyles. Or if you ever seen the movie Stick It, it's this gymnastic movie and it's just something as like your bra strap showing could deduct points. And she just got to the point where she said, stick it. She's going to be me because she no longer wanted to conform to a certain mold. Because whenever you're going through life circumstances, you may have on days, you may have off days, you're going right. to have the hills, you're going to have the valleys, but that doesn't make you any less than who you are. Just like your hair doesn't make you any less right. than who you are. Your hair does not define you, your hair refines you because mm -hmm. it's something uniquely made up for you because no one else may have your same exact, you know, pattern, your texture, mm -hmm. your feel, the, um, all of those things. So just embrace it. And I think if we could really take accountability of our crown, whether it's our hair, our head, or whatever we think is our personal crown in our own lives, then that also makes up who we are. And we're going to walk with confidence. We're going to talk with confidence and we're going to just own the damn thing. So I'm, right. I'm here to empower you. And so is Janae that you have it. And Another thing that really stood out is as I was reading your your niches, you started with your I am statements, which were your affirmations and et cetera. So have you always been, you know, that way or what did it look like if you haven't been that way before? Um, yeah, no. So it hasn't always been that way. I think <laughs> um, like in more recently, the past, uh, like since I graduated college, I guess that was like the past, like. I graduated 2015. Okay. I can't do small math. I'm a mathematician. I can't do small math. Um, <laughs> um, so I don't know. I feel like it's just, it's been a growth in progress. Um, no, I wasn't always like this. I was very um, introverted. I was very shy. Um, yeah. I, I didn't, I don't know. I guess I didn't see myself as, you know, beautiful because I didn't look like everyone else. And, you know, um, and so more recently I've been, you know, trying to get into my head, like and get into this mindset, like, you know, you are, you know, just as beautiful as everyone else. Um, you know, you're strong, you're confident, you're all of these things. So, um, yeah, so those affirmations are like, you know, that's, that that's my thing. Like I am this, like I am worthy. I am black. I'm a woman. Like, I just want people to know, like, there's no if, ands, or buts about that. Like I'm smart. I, so that's, that's my thing. So I am whatever, you know, whatever I choose to say that day. Um, I'm trying to like, get really into like saying it in the mirror and like, I have sticky notes around my house. That's like, it's like, Oh, you know, different things. So I'm really trying to like ingrain it into my head because, um, you touched on like the imposter syndrome earlier. And I have a lot of that, especially within my PhD program. So even these little, you know, sticky notes around the walls and stuff like that really helps. Even if it's just a little bit, it helps. So. And I'm glad that you were honest and 
and said yes and no, because so many people see us on these pedestals and they think that we have arrived. But just because I'm at a certain level now does not mean I have always been there. And don't place me on a pedestal if I haven't even placed myself on a pedestal, because at the end of the day, Genesis is just a human being like you are. Janae is just a human being like we are. And we all have different paths that we're walking on. And that doesn't make us any better or less than another person. We're here to do life together and complement one, one another. And we're still going through this marathon, or I like to say roller coaster ride, y'all. And you want to know the name of it? It's called life. L-I-F-E. Because it's always something to be learned. And I want you to know that you have to humble yourself sometimes. And sometimes it's those L's you know, sometimes I take a L in order for a win for you to appreciate that W in your life. And I'm so glad you said that, uh, Janae, because I too was like that, you know, in high school. Oh, this is I'm dating me. So I graduated high school in 09, graduated college in 2016. Um, and, you know, I had some some L's, you know, I had, you know, bouts of depression. You know, I was a victim of bullying. You know, I went through loss. Then recently I had four big L's. I lost my dad, lost my job from corporate, lost both of my grandmothers and my husband and I, and I were both laid off at the same time. So we were literally living on faith and hope street y'all. But our biggest win was the birth of our daughter. And she just came out of nowhere. Cause I was like, there's a baby in me. What? Cause I didn't know I could have a baby. And I was like, man, I'll just have some fur babies or whatnot and call it a day. But I tell you, the Lord had a different plan, but it was like, had I not gone through those valley moments, I wouldn't have appreciate the hill moments at the hilltop. And even though I have some, some type of hilltop moments right now, I still have more to go based on my personal goals and metrics. And with Janae, with you going through this pageant and you preparing for the pageant, you having the crowns that you already have, the accolades going through your PhD, I want to give you your flowers while they can bloom today, metaphorically speaking, because there are some women that look like you and I that feel like they're not good enough, that feel that they can't compete right. because they're allowing their mindset to psych them out or they're allowing other projections that people have made or right. said about them, keep them out of the race. And I'm here to tell you, you are good enough for the damn race. You need to do the damn thing. And as not, if Nike could say, just do it, why don't you do it? Why are you seeking validation from people who were never meant to be with you on the right. lifelong journey? You need to check in with yourself and remember that dream that was burning inside of you when you were a kid. Who told you that dream was dead? Who told you you weren't good enough? I need you to dream again. I need you to live again. I need you to pop. And when I say pop, prepared on purpose, that is pop. Or if you want to be like Genesis, have your own TNT and blow some stuff up. Metaphorically speaking, y'all, I don't need to be sued. TNT for me is transition and transformation. TNT. Then find what defines you, find what refines you, and find what your skills are and take ownership of your skills because there's no one else that can do what you can do. And that's why your DNA is uniquely for you. The world needs you today tomorrow and forevermore. So take what you have and ignite it because tomorrow is not promised, but you have today. And if you start today, you never know what you lay down. Someone else is going to pick up and the baton is going to be passed. I had right. no idea, Janae, that I was going to interview you today. And you said you found out about the podcast by your old resident coordinator. Do you mind sharing who that was? <laughs> Oh yeah, Jonathan Harris, um, he's Lincoln University. Um, he's doing like a lot of great things now. Um, he's a book and he's he did actually did a pageant too. Um, I like always follow his page because he's very inspirational. And I think I came I came across one of your podcasts and so I listened to it. And I was like, oh man, I was like, okay, well, hold on, let me let me go back and scroll through. And so I saw some other ones. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and listen, give it a try. And I loved it. And that's why I reached out because I was like, you know what? Why not? Like the most you can say is no. And so, you know, you never know what opportunities you have. Like, right. Yeah. Today, I didn't know I was going to be on a podcast either. So, yeah. And I love it. And I'm going to go ahead and throw you an audible before we wind down. So is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you want to share with the audience regarding the work that you're doing in STEM or the work that you're doing within the pageantry world? Um, yeah, just a couple of things. So, um, for, so I'll be hosting, uh, 
like statewide, national, whatever, um, discovering the crown sessions. I'm going to do them on Zoom. So I have been originally doing them in person. Um, but since um, other states have been requesting to have me come over, it's kind of hard. So I've the closer states I can do it, but like, you know, farther states. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing them on Zoom. So I'm going to, you know, start, you know, sending those out. So anyone can join in. Um, and, you know, it's a free session. Um, you get a little mini crown and a little sash to go with. So it's just, yeah. So it's just something fun to do and get on, you know, for an hour or so. Um, so I'll be working on that. Um, as far as, uh, you mentioned something earlier, you are talking about, um, you know, being honest with yourself and about, uh, you know, saying yes and no about the, um, where you're always this confident. And that's one of the parts that how I start off my, uh, series or like my workshops. Um, I stand there, I'm like, okay, so what do you think? Like, what do you think I do? Like, I don't tell them anything. Like I just stand there. And I'm like, okay, so tell me what you see when you look at me. And then the girls, you know, some, of course, it's usually little teenage girls. They always give me like some crazy things. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah, I'm like, but I was like, so then I go out and I change. I'm like, this is what I usually look like. Like, this is me. And then that's how we do it. Like, this is, you know, crown and sash is great. But like, I mean, I look, I'm just like everyone else. I'm not on a pedestal. Um, and so that's really like that vulnerable moment for me. Like, I want to know what people like think of when like, is my face like too strong? Like, am I like frowning up? Like, do it look like I hate you? Like, you know, so I really want to know that. So that's how we start with the vulnerability and that opens up and makes people more comfortable to, you know, be themselves. And then especially because we're doing like, we paint and stuff. So I, I don't want to mess up stuff. So that's why also why I change, but you know, just really being with people and connecting with people like the crown and the sash that doesn't mean anything, you know, I mean, it does, but it really doesn't in a way, like I'm me, no matter what, um, this is like you said, this is just, you know, adding something, another layer. Um, and the last thing is like my little mantra, um, cause I've always had trouble with sleeping. Um, and so I, my like mantra motto is called rest. So it's reclaim your energy and set the tone for the journey ahead. So, um, yeah, if you guys want to use that, you can. But yeah, so rest. I always, you know, I'm like, I need to rest. I need to, that's my thing. Because I feel like we need to take a day to actually rest and figure out your life in this roller coaster because it's it's wild out here. Yes, I love that, y'all. Rest, reclaim your energy and set the tone. But it was said by Janae Jasmine Lincoln. So put some respect on her mantra. So. <laughs> Jasmine, let's jump into the CTA, which is the call to action. How can the audience connect with you? What's your website? And do you have a primary social media channel you hang out on? Uh, yeah, so my primary social media is um, at Miss Commonwealth State International um, or at Miss Commonwealth State INT23. Um, and website is ongoing. So I'm actually building my own website. Um, I'm, I'm, I do some coding, but you know, I'm trying to get a little bit better. So that's coming. That's oncoming. Um, I'm getting there. So I'll let you know as soon as it's done. Okay. Um, awesome. So y'all, yeah. I will have her social media handle in the show notes. So definitely tap in with her, let her know what you liked, what you don't like, what you want to, um, hear more of and et cetera. And you know, the drill, make sure you like comment, follow and subscribe. Digital currency is king. And let me know what you like and what you don't because feedback is a gift and it helps me improve personally and professionally. And lastly, but not least, I'm looking for brand sponsors and listener supporters. It is paid sponsorship because it does take resources for this mission and movement to go further and faster. So if you want to link arms with me where we could complement each other, we could build synergies, please reach out to me. All of my contact information will be in the show notes. And until the next guest, next segment, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Have yourself an amazing day. And remember, you were created for a purpose. You matter. You are gifted. You are talented. You are bold. You are beautiful. You are courageous. So do the damn thing and stop letting the world conform you. You are meant to pop. <laughs>